going on? It's Quinn David Furness. Welcome to my show. Quinn David Furness presents the Beantown Podcast Fantasy Football Preview Edition Coronavirus Spectacular. What's happening? My name is Quinn, and this is my show, and we're coming to you live with our third annual Fantasy Football Preview Really excited to uh, be with you here today, and I know a lot of you are expecting Hunter Bolin for the third straight year, but he just got married, and I think he's been on a extended honeymoon in Mexico for a while. So we've got little sister subbing in, manager and franchise owner to the stars, owner of too many nicknames to count, but I'll tell you, in her in my phone, she shows up as... Uh, Shish Tawuk Sledgehog Sally, which is a fun one. Abby Furness, what's going on? Welcome to the program. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I feel honored to be a fantasy football, you know, expert on your podcast. If you had to use two adverbs to describe how you're feeling right now, what would they be? I'd say nervous and excited. Oh, those are my favorite adverbs. Of course, the L-Y words. Very good. Very well done. Well, I, wanna... I was like to open up a beer for the podcast, so, you know. You're drinking beer on the podcast? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I just want to come out. It's refreshing. It's a uh, cucumber sour crush from Tinder. Okay. Well, there's no Tinder drinks over here. I want to come out on the record and say this is a family show. I wasn't aware of this going into it and so i do apologize for all our (laughs) listeners 12 and under and this is a great time to mention that listener discretion is advised when you're listening to podcast number one we'll occasionally use some foul language and number two i wasn't aware that guests would be inundating themselves with alcoholic beverages live (laughs) on the air so i apologize in advance uh things could get wild and wacky uh, well, I want to give everyone a, a quick little introduction to, to Abby. She wasn't one of the original Great White North fantasy no. owners. She's she's come in, what is this, uh, you've had five years under your belt, I believe. I was just looking at... I think this is my fourth. Well, I was just looking at your records. I think you're going into your, your fifth year or your sixth year, I believe. Oh, um, really? Wow, it's been a while. semantics doesn't matter. I just want to give the listeners a little preview of your history as a manager so two years ago (laughs) you pulled off the first winless season in great white north history 0 and 13 which was very exciting and last year another trip to the toilet bowl so i what what we have here is kind of a new york knicks strategy and i think it's actually really good long-term thinking the way abby's treating this league and her participation in the league as far as i can tell is by getting slightly worse each year (laughs) she'll continue to earn herself a higher draft pick and she's accumulating talent now the only issue here that abby has yet to realize is that we redraft every single year with with new players so Cat might be out of the bag on the strategy there, but but Abby, I just want to give you a chance to respond. You've won what uh, about five games in the last two seasons combined? That's not very many. Um, what 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 can you tell fans that this year is going to be different than last two years? You know, okay, I have to say, two years ago I was not in full control of my team. I had other people taking care of my team, and they did a terrible job. Um, And last year, you know, I, if you look at, if you look at the scores, if you look at the record, almost every week, maybe not every week, that's that's a little exaggerating for me. I like to think higher myself, but a lot of weeks I had good numbers, but I just happened to play a person who had even better numbers and better points. So I had, there was, there was weeks where I should have won, but I just happened to go up against another team who happened to score way more and, like, surprisingly way more points than they should have. And, like, the projected amount, they scored way more. So there's a lot of games in the last season I should have won. It just the luck was not in my favor. 
Mm. You received a lot of criticism for taking David Johnson with your first overall pick last year in the draft. It was a, a, a big dud, a big bust. I think that was just last year um, yeah. or, or either the year before. How, how does that big colossal fail inform what you're looking to do this year in the draft? You know, I'm really looking at – I want to go full on on strong running backs and getting those first round. I'm not as worried about quarterbacks and, like, wide receivers as much as I used to be. Like, quarterbacks, I used to, like, try and grab, like, the second or third maybe – like round, but I'm not as I've learned over the years that well, it kind of depends. In our league, people grab quarterbacks pretty like early in, the, in our round picks. Um, but I think I need to be stronger in my running backs and have a good solid platform of them. And again, like I mean, 2020 with COVID happening, I don't really know what the season's gonna look like, and we don't have a preseason, which is what I kind of base a lot of my you know, stuff off of, um, it's just, it's, this year is like going to be way hard, really hard to pick, but I also think I have a good feel of who, I don't know, at least in the first round, because I think I'm, I think I'm round, I pick it like third in the first round, I can't remember now, um, I think I have a good idea of who I'm going to go with first, so, um, I feel way more confident this year than I have in the past years. Are you telling me that in previous years you've been watching preseason tape to inform your early round draft picks? Um, I've been doing mock drafts during the first se- like during preseason. So how is that different from this year? Well, I haven't done any mock drafts this year, so because there's no preseason. Correct. I did. The, I checked the logic on that. It doesn't really work out, but that's okay. Let's move ahead here. You you seem to be to have a lot of uh, stock in running backs this year. So I'm not going to ask you who you're eyeing for your first round pick because that's basically insider trading. But I will ask you who, who. So so last night, Jaguar former Jaguars running back signs. Or, or Leonard Fournette signs with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who now on their roster currently have Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones is second, LaShawn McCoy, Kishan Vaughn, their third round uh, draft <laughs> pick, and Dare Ogunbowale, who Kyle drafted last year. Uh, what do you make out of the Tampa Bay uh, Bucks running back situation? I mean, they've got a strong team if you look at it. Like, like the running back wise, they've got a good. Um set up for this year but I really don't think this league or the season going to last more than a couple weeks so like they might be good but I don't know I feel like I feel like we're going into this league or the season as um I don't know a lot of a lot of questions a lot of we've got a lot of older players and I I personally think that the season's not going to last more than a couple weeks and I mean, granted, yeah, I'm going to draft like it's going to last the whole season. But, you know, like, I don't know. I don't really know if, like, you know, when we get down to around, like, six or eight or you know, even nine, like, does it really matter at that point? It's a very uh, nihilist fantasy football draft strategy. So if, if I'm interpreting what you what you just said correctly in response to my question, you're saying draft any of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers you want because probably 80% of them, 80% of their running back core will come down with COVID-19 by week five or six. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, maybe not the whole team, but, like, if you look at past, like, sporting, like sports teams and baseball teams and in, uh, like, soccer teams and basketball teams, like, they're all getting COVID at this rate. Like... Not all in, but like teams like are players are getting COVID and they're shutting down immediately. And I don't see how that's not going to happen in NFL. Like, they're the teams in NFL are way bigger. They're you know they're managers and coaches and stuff. Like, there's way more people that are involved. Like, I don't see how they're like there's not going to be teams that are going to shut down because of COVID. Well, for what it's worth, I'll tell you, I'm watching a playoff hockey game right now. I watched a playoff basketball game earlier and uh, the Cubs game earlier this afternoon. So the other uh, professional sports leagues are all going 100%. So we'll see. Um, Speaking of of COVID-19, however, my first big question I want to ask you about, 
a lot of older players in the league. High, yeah. high, heightened risk for catching COVID-19. So when we're talking about a fantasy draft, who are those older players that you're thinking, mm, I'm not going to touch this year because there's a good chance they're not going to make it uh, because of COVID-19? Who, who, who's on your do not draft list due to COVID complications? Uh, Russell Wilson's getting up there, you know? He's like 28. Yeah, but he's in that age range kind of. Wow. I, I, okay, who else? Uh, Russell Wilson, um, Cam Newton, maybe, you know? They're like the same age. I know. Like, I, I you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Let me think. Hold on. Cam Newton. Um, oh, you know, Tom Brady, though. He's freaking old. Yeah, he's 43. He's He's pretty old. He's probably the oldest, right? Is the probably quarterback right now? Probably, just about. I'd say, yeah, I would probably say, I mean, Tom Brady definitely. Will, I mean, if he doesn't get COVID at this rate, if he plays football, he's not get COVID, you know? Um, it sounds like you're saying the entire Buccaneers franchise is probably just going to die at some point. Yeah, I mean, they're going to, you know? Um... I'm trying to think. Brett Favre isn't playing anymore. Mm, is he? Not quite. Is he's, he playing about, anymore? You're about 10 years behind. Yeah, that's what I figured. I just remember, I was thinking about, like, back in the Packers and Vikings days. Um, yeah, I mean, Tom Brady's probably the oldest uh, quarterback right now. Mm-hmm. And he just moved to Florida, right? Yep, for Tampa Bay. Yeah, which so dumb, but whatever. <laughs> That's his choice, you know. All right. So, so it seems like you're you're talking about quarterbacks mostly. So let me flip the question: Who are the quarterbacks that you got your eye on this year that you think could be good for your fantasy team? Mm, I don't know. I, I always like. Sounds I always like there's a lot of typing list. going on over there. I have my list of um, quarterbacks. But I always lose out on my quarterbacks. But if I could get, well, no, you're in my league. I don't want to tell you who I'm getting. Okay, that's fine. I'm just wondering if you have like a list of quarterbacks that you think are going to perform well this year, not the one yeah, that I you're trying three. to draft. I think Patrick Mahomes is still going to do great. What about not obvious choices? Oh, I have no non-obvious choices. I'm <laughs> it sounds like picks. sisters I'm... going early for a quarterback this year. You think Mahomes is going to go early, early in our league? I mean, maybe first round, maybe second round. Who's picks before me? I I'm I don't have the draft order of our league in front of me right now. I'm just saying based off of usually where the top quarterback is drafted each year. Yeah, I guess it's true. I mean, if I could get Mahomes on my team this year, I would be very happy. Um, well, all I'm saying is if you don't draft him first, you might have a shot at him in, with your second pick, but that's already all the way back at, you know, pick 18. So I'm not telling you who to draft oh, who not to we draft. we go the reverse order going back. I forgot. Yeah, snake draft. Um, that's true. I mean, Mahomes, Prescott, I mean, Matt Ryan, Russell Wilson, they're still all great quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I will not ever draft Tom Brady because I do not like Tom Brady and I will never have him on my team. Well, plus you think he's going to die halfway through the season of COVID complications. Here also, our uncle is calling us. Oh, well, we're live, so he's just going to have to wait. I don't know. I'm just, I just sent him a, I really told him around the podcast. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, if I, if Patrick Mahomes was amazing last year, and if I could get him on my team, I don't remember who had him last year, but I just, I, he's a great guy, great quarterback. He's, I just, I think he, he's young, and I think he has a lot of potential for the, he's got a lot of potential for the next few years. I think he'd do great, and I don't know, I, I see a lot of potential in him. He's like the next Aaron Rodgers, probably. Well, his fiance is a very lucky woman, and I would say that considering he's already won league MVP and Super Bowl MVP, I think he's well past where Aaron Rodgers is. So 
um, oh, might yeah, have to that's change your expectations. Yeah. Um, Do you, how do you think of Ezekiel Elliott and um, cause McCaff- him, McCaffrey, Kamar, uh, Dalvin Cook all were great last year. Do you think they're going to still be great this year? Well, Christian McCaffrey had one of the best fantasy seasons of all time last year, and I think he'll continue to do well this year. The only big question is they have a new quarterback and a new coach, so that kind of complicates things. Alvin Kamara had a really bad year last year compared to what we've seen prior in prior years. Two years ago, he had a really good year. Every year except for last year. Okay, it was two years ago. I was thinking it was last year, but it was, you know, you're right. It was two years ago. He had a really good, whoever had him two years ago in our league was amazing. Hmm. Well, I won and it wasn't me, so I'm not sure. All but, right, that's um, fair. The other thing is uh, Dalvin Cook is usually pretty good, but he's has a lot of injury problems and he's threatening to not play because they're not paying him very much. So that could be risky. Oh, well, that sucks. They can pay him more. Well, everyone's hurting in this economy. That is true. I will give you that. Um, well, as he go yet, is he? How is he thinking on this on this year? He looks pretty good. I don't know. It depends on what whether or not you want a cowboy on your team. That's true. I don't want to like cowboy players and criminals, as Grandpa used to say. Yeah, I understand. Mm. I try to stay away from cowboy players, but then when people get cowboy players who do well, they don't like kick my butt and. In my in the league, so Isn't you never that know. Always the way it is. It's just so frustrating. Mm. On me. Well, you posted a picture on social media recently where you were digging into a fantasy football for dummies book, and I'm kind of curious, what have been your big takeaways from that book so far? Uh, my biggest takeaway from the book so far is that it says, um, excuse me, um, it says that. The key formula for fantasy football, this is literally what it says, skill plus opportunity equals success. The foundation of a good fantasy football team is running backs. And quarterbacks are just as important, but don't need to be picked in the first round. But you know from our league, I feel like quarterbacks go way sooner, like go out in the first round, correct? Well, it's a little bit different because our league – Gives more points to quarterbacks than most other leagues. Oh, I guess that's true. So our, I feel like our quarterbacks are ranked higher than our running backs. Well, it's kind of hard to just compare a, an entire position group against each other, but if you can get a really good quarterback, it's really nice to have. Yeah, and it says, like, does good team equal good fantasy quarterback? Unlike your running back rankings, don't put too much weight on the NFL team's win-loss record from previous years when ranking quarterbacks. Most productive offensive with good quarterbacks will win games, and most mistake-prone teams and quarterbacks will lose games. However, if you don't draft an elite quarterback early and you decide to draft two good quarterbacks, then one of them could be strong-armed quarterback on a team with a bad defense because he'll be throwing the ball quite a bit. A player like this could be a late-round steal in your draft. You know? It's just, I feel like a lot of it's hit or miss. Like, you have a great quarterback, but a sucky team. Yeah. Or you could have a great quarterback who's playing great defenses all the time. Oh, I hate when that happens. Which happens to me all the time. Yeah, that's just, you know, what are you going to do? It's almost like you got to, like, draft a quarterback who's, you know, you got to draft one quarterback who's, you know, a great all-around quarterback, yada, yada, and then a one who has a great all-around team, excuse me, and then a great quarterback who has not a great team, so you have it as a backup, you know? Wow, your brain's really working overtime over there. You know what I'm just saying? Thanks. Mm. Well, it's really important not only for NFL players, but for fantasy football managers, especially during their drafts, to stay cool and hydrated, so let me throw this to you. What's your favorite Gatorade flavor? light blue or the um cool blue or it's like not the deep blue but it's like the iceberg blue or whatever it's called i don't know which flavor that is but it sounds awfully delicious i don't know what it is it's not it's like the light blue flavor i don't know what it's called mm, i'm a big fan of the white one because it's cherry flavored and no one expects it Ooh, i don't like that it's a surprise just like if you ever want a playoff game that's yeah that's that would be a surprise if i ever want a playoff game 
Yeah, I don't think it's ever happened, has it? Yeah, it has. Oh, we'll have to go back in and check the records. I'm not sure when, but it has. Yeah, maybe back in like the Nixon administration. Probably back then. Yeah. Well, the, the one thing that everyone in the league is most concerned about this year is not COVID-19. It's making sure that Walt doesn't win again. So what, yeah. what are your top tips? It, just imagine you're speaking to the rest of the Great White North right now because we'll certainly send this podcast to them. What, what advice do you have for them for, for beating Walt this year? You know, if you're, if you're willing to trade flip players for a week to beat him, then you should do it. Like, if you know you're, you know, if you, like, say you and I, say I'm playing Walt this year or last week or whatever, and you have a player who you don't need and will beat Walt, I'd say let's make that trade for one week, two weeks, whatever. And then we can, you know, beat him every week. We just, you know, switch. Like, we all got to work as a team to beat Walt. Mm, could have one super team that just rotates from week to week. I like that. Yeah. Forget about the rest of the league. Just try to beat Walt, you know? If you can work your way to, I mean, how many Super Bowls has he, has he won? I don't know. I think some of them might have been illegitimate. He's won so many, and he's won so many in his other leagues. And, you know, like, I think, you know, he's got to cool down a little bit. Give some, some of us other people a chance. What are your thoughts on mandatory drug testing, random, before each game, and it might only be for Walt's team? You know, I'm not worried about the drugs with his team. I think he's got a legitimate team, and I think he's legitimate. And I don't think that, I don't think we need to do random every time drug testing maybe every once in a while just to throw them off the game a little bit but i'll even do it every week maybe every other week yeah you know every other week every two weeks i think it'll be fine hmm. maybe we should convince the commissioner to take away his first round draft pick or something wait is he seriously first round draft pick well, everyone gets to pick in the first round. No, I mean, like, sorry, like his, oh, I thought you meant, like, his first, like, he was first in the first round. No, that would be first overall oh. pick. Sorry, I thought you meant first in the first round. I misunderstood. No, no, I mean, I don't think there's any way to take that away unless you give him auto draft for the first round. Well, maybe we set him up or something. Maybe he cheated on last year's, you know, playoffs or something like that. Ooh, maybe we could call him with, like, a... Wedding venue, like, distraction. I'm all for distractions. I think that's pretty smart. All right. Maybe we can call it the wedding venue distraction. Like, hey, this is a wedding venue. Maybe we could text bomb him or send him a boatload of fun memes. Oh, we can game pigeon him. He'll be distracted by if we all game pigeon him at the same time. That's good thinking. Or when it's his turn on the conference call, we blast a bunch of dolphin clicking noises to distract him. I used to have a water bottle that Aunt Anna gave me that made the dolphin clicking noise when I used to drink out of it. It made me want to throw my computer out the window, so there you might be onto something there. It was the worst water bottle ever. I don't know why I had it. Yeah, it was. no one was having a good time. Yeah. Mm. Well, a, a common concern every year, a classic question is, how early is too early to draft a kicker? What's your philosophy there? I mean, I say my kicker till by the last two rounds. Mm. Who who are your if, top kickers this year? Um, I'll be honest, I haven't even looked at kickers for this year. Oh wow. That's how low they are on my on my totem pole. I spent an entire mock draft just taking kickers to kind of get a gauge for how they were going. Yeah? Yeah, it was pretty boring. Yeah, how did that work out for you? Well, I dominated. Yahoo gave me a B plus. All right, that's not bad. Wait, so you just take a kicker every round, or how'd that work? Yeah, just so I don't run out. Oh, gotcha. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm trying to think of the kickers. That I'm not, I don't even know what kicker I had last year. I mean, a couple years ago, I'm really trying to Gaskowski, who was like, the best kicker I've ever had. And ever since then, I've never gotten a kicker close enough to him, so I'm just disappointed every year. 
Yeah, he just signed with Tennessee today, so maybe you can have him again. Oh, uh, that's true. He's not with New England anymore. Nope, they cut him. That's good, because I don't like New England's team, so I'd be happy with him. I mean, you know, oh, you know who else might get COVID this year? Mason Cosby. He's old. He is pretty old, that's true. I mean, and not the Mason Cosby that went to school with the boys, but he's pretty old. Yeah, and he's shrouded in cheddar. Yeah, he's got cheese heads all over him. Mm -hmm. Very dangerous. I mean, if I could get Gaskowski again, I would be pretty happy. Well, maybe you might have to take him in, you know, an early round so no one else gets him. Yeah, I'm going to have to pick a kicker before Hunter does. I'm thinking at least the third round. That's way too early. I would not get a kicker until, like, round seven. That might still be good. I think round seven's a good even. All right, I'll pencil you in. Thank you. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. What Nick, pick are you in the round? Uh, number six. Ooh, and I'm, I'm number three, right? I don't know. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure number three. I think I switched with somebody. I don't remember who. Okay. Yeah, for anyone listening, there's still time to trade up. I'm shopping my number six draft selection for cash considerations, also stocks and bonds. So just a general PSA. Interesting. Yeah, your favorite. Well, what, we're, we're kind of getting towards the end of our time here, but it's important on draft day to sort of be in the right mindset, get in the mode. So if you had to listen to one Beatles album to get you pumped up for your fantasy football draft, which album would you pick? Oh, man, I'd say the White Album. The White Album is just my favorite. What's your what What's your top track off the White Album? Uh, top track on the, off the White Album. I mean, I do love the song Back in the USSR. Yeah, that's a good one. It's just so it's just so fun and upbeat and it's great. Um, but Obla D Obla Da is on that album, um, which is also like equally. It's just like fun and like that song. The meaning behind that song is just so fun. Um, mm, I don't know. My other one, I'm trying to think. Back in the USSR, Back in the USSR is just such a fun song. Obla D Obla Da is such a fun song. The first version of Revolution is on that song. I believe, um, and that's also a great song, because I'm pretty sure the first version, because it's like the re, like, they redid the version, um, I think the first version is the one that got banned from BBC, like, BBC Radio for a while. Oh, I hate when that happens. So, I, it's just like, it's a great song. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, what's what's your one piece of advice to fantasy managers this year? My one piece of advice is that you know, with all the with twenty twenty being all the uncertainty that's going on, and with COVID, and we don't know where the players are going to do and who's going to decide to do what. I I hope that all of the managers will. You know, draft like, you know, the league is still going on, but also with all the Black Lives Banner stuff that's going on, that they'll support their players in if they decide to protest and, you know, take a, take a knee during the national anthem that, you know, they're not going to drop their players and stuff like that. Like, I think right now 2020 is a, it's a big year for a lot of different things and social justice and... I hope that all the managers in our league will continue to support their teammates. Wow, if someone got released from their team for supporting Black Lives Matter, that sounds like a, a lawsuit just waiting to happen. I mean, I agree. I'm just saying that, like, it's not unheard of. Hmm. All right. Last question. You haven't announced a new team name yet. When can we expect that? Uh, I'm not going to announce my new team name until the draft. Wow. I have my name figured out and picked out, but I'm not going to release it till the draft. Wow, it's going to be like a red carpet premiere. Pretty much. Okay. All right, any final thoughts? Um, no, I mean, I, I'm excited for this year, and I'm hoping that it's going to be a great, fun year, and I really hope that NFL, like, I really hope that we can have a full season. Um, if not, I hope we all get to do, 
the drafts can be fun. All of us on our conference calls can be great, and everyone can join. And I'm just excited for the draft. All right. Well, Great White North drafts Monday, Labor Day, September uh, what seventh uh, at. Uh, 6 p.m. West Coast time, 9 p.m. East Coast. You're not going to want to miss it. You'll get the full rundown and recap on next week's Beantown podcast, which will be after the NFL season has already started, which is crazy. Uh, Abby Furness, thanks so much for, for joining us on the show, uh, and, and thanks for all your fantastic fantasy insights. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been a minute. I think it's been since October. Um, since we love last being spoke on the, on the phone? Podcast. Subscribe, everyone. It's great. Well, well, come back anytime, okay? All right, thank you. All right, sis, have a good night. You too, have a good night. Love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, what a time to be alive. Thanks to Sister for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. And yes, we were getting calls from all sorts of different parties while that was going on. I literally go the entire day with about two and a half text messages come in. And then the instant I jump on a call for 35 minutes, it's just mayhem. So I guess people really go nuts in the 9 p.m. hour of, of Thursday nights these days. You know, it's a, people are taking that four-day weekend. They're getting very excited. They're jumping on it. And I just want to mention that this whole time I've been recording, I have simultaneously been watching the Philadelphia Flyers and New York Islanders game six of the Eastern Semis. Uh, they're in double overtime right now. Oh, how did that not go in? Uh, fascinating game. And, and trying to podcast and watch double overtime playoff hockey at the same time is easier said than done. Um, but yes, we're, we're all very excited. Um, I have uh, a fantasy football draft on Sunday, one on Monday, and then one, I believe, on Tuesday as well. Tuesday or Wednesday. I have to go back and check. I'm playing three leagues this year, uh, potentially. I, I um, have my two normal ones and then also might be doing an intramural one. I I like getting involved with the intramural sports. I played intramural football last fall, which was uh, fun until I hurt myself. Um, and unfortunately, I won't have the opportunity to do that this year. Um, but I, I still might play some virtual football. You know, it's a whole bunch of freshmen and sophomores for the most part. Uh, and I'm going to, you know, old gray beard over here in his 15th year of fantasy football is going to come in and uh, show them the ropes. Uh, but but thanks for tuning in uh, to this week's show. I want to give a special shout out to our sponsors, Home Pride Oregon, uh, great for home inspections in the Central Oregon Greater Bend area. Uh, Cuts by Q, they'll give you a fresh cut from night till noon. You're gonna wanna get them a flat rate, twenty dollars. And we're now doing highlights, which is very exciting. The Samson Q2U series pulling double duty for the first time in a while. We haven't had a guest on the show uh, for what feels like forever. It's tough to, to get guests when everyone is kind of stuck at home. Uh, but I do appreciate Sister calling in from the West Coast, uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, so, so thanks to our sponsors and uh, thanks everyone else for tuning in and supporting the show. Um, we will uh, be off, not off, we're not missing any weeks, uh, but when you record on a Thursday, uh, you inevitably take some time off before you uh, record again. So um, that's what we have for you, everyone. Enjoy your holiday weekend. I know uh, I, I'm working tomorrow, but my boss is off, and we all know what those days tend to be like. So uh Three-day weekend, going to be exciting. I was going to try to do some hiking at Star Rock uh, on Saturday, but the car situation fell through. So, unfortunately, that's not going to happen. But one of these days, I will get out there. Uh, special announcement. Last thing I'll say before I'm signing off. Um, we, I wouldn't say that the show has been in a rut, but, but a challenging thing is that I love to do my show on the road, and we literally haven't done a show from outside of Chicago for so long. Uh, it, it's been painful uh, because we have just been working from home 
stuck at home for what are we at like 23 weeks or something like that now 24 um just today mere hours ago i'm very excited to announce that i booked a flight using uh some travel credits to boston i'm flying out there uh october 24th and i'm going to be out there for an entire week leading up to halloween i fly back to chicago on halloween and we're doing a new england road trip and i think in addition to you know some fun kind of solo hikes and maple syrup testing and, and all sorts of fun hijinks. It's going to be a great opportunity for you as the hashtag friend of the podcast uh, to really reconnect with our show. I'm thinking we're going we're to do some sort of merch drop. Uh, it's our fall quarantine tour. Uh, we're going to come up with a better title than that. Uh, I promise it, the best is yet to come, okay, as what, what's her name, Guilfoyle said. Ooh, that lady's scary. Um, but it's going to be really exciting. So that's going to be coming up at the very end of October. Uh, it's going to be my, uh, no lie, my first vacation proper uh, since, I, what, what are we at? July 2018 was the last time I took a vacation. Literally, you think about this show, you think about its rich history. The Roast of Quinn David Furnace was one of our first ever specials. That all, that, I mean, it, it's considered a seminal moment in the show's history, but that, that show took place only about, what, half a year into the start of the show, six, seven months, and we've been going for two-plus years since then. That's the last time I took a vacation. We went to Alaska. We did our, our live show from the Anchorage Airport, and then we did our Bean Tom podcast uh, uh, unplugged special where i was roasted by fellow family members still one of if not the greatest podcast episode we've ever had um i haven't taken a vacation since then um i have gone to my parents house a couple of times for christmas and i once drove uh, a u-haul from chicago to oregon to help my parents move some stuff those don't count as vacations uh i'm going road tripping through New England in the fall. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited um, to get away. I haven't taken more than two days off from my job since July of 2018. So by the time we get there, it's going to have been, what, like 27 months, something like that, um, which is, is nuts. It's just what happens when you, when you switch jobs. Uh, I'm really excited for it, looking forward to it um, bigly. That's just a little taste of what's happening. We're going to be doing some shows out there in New England, Green Mountains, White Mountains, Adirondacks, Maine, maybe a Stephen King tour. We'll see. It's going to be exciting. But that's a little bit about what's coming up. So uh, thanks again to Sister for being our fantasy football specialist this year really appreciate it uh i'm gonna sign out and this hockey game's still going there's five minutes left in double overtime maybe we'll get a triple overtime which could be very exciting thanks everyone for tuning in if you're drafting this weekend best of luck remember kickers seventh round per sister's advice and uh you know what it's never too early to take a quarterback i think that's what we got from sister unless it's tom brady and 80% of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers backfield is going to get cleared out by COVID. So don't worry about it. Play the lottery. You're probably best off drafting all five running backs, okay? Just clear up a third of your roster space. One of them's got a hit, right? And those are pretty good odds, 20%, not bad. Um, that's what we got for you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, appreciate everyone's support. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, email us, beantownpodcast at yahoo.com. Again, it's beantown, beantownpodcast at yahoo.com. Tweet at us. We are at beantowncast. And I will say we got a uh, direct message from Venmo. I'm not joking. Direct message from Venmo um, today or late last night. I don't recall which. I had tweeted something about uh, – Venmo, like no, in November of 2019, and tw the tweet, I don't have it in front of me, but it reads something like, um, do you ever just start scrolling through your Venmo news feed and you get lost like you're in a J.J. Abrams show? Um, that's it, The tweet is 10 months old, 
and they direct messaged me early this morning saying, hey, we would love to use this in our social. Um, I don't really know what's going on over there at Venmo, but I said yes. So if I blow up, just be happy that you were on the ground floor of Beantown Podcast fandom. Uh, because you know what they say about amateur podcasts is after they go for about two and a half years, that's really when they start to pick up steam. So, again, the best is yet to come. I was watching the Trump rally in uh, Western PA today, and he said that too. It's so spooky. Okay, that, that's what I got for you. Let's not get into politics here. It's not Auntie Michelle's Facebook page. Uh, thanks for listening. Everyone, stay safe, stay sane. And, uh, ooh, I thought that was a goal for the Islanders. Go Islanders, and we'll check in on you next time. All right, peace. Peace.